Russia wants to regain full control of the Kursk region ahead of possible peace talks under the administration of new U.S. President Donald Trump. However, Ukrainian troops continue to repel enemy counterattacks, The Washington Post reports. It is clear that Moscow will not begin any negotiations until it expels every single Ukrainian soldier from the Kursk region, Konstantin Remchikov, editor-in-chief of Nezavisimea Gazeta, told journalists. The publication noted that Russia has begun to realize that the Kursk region could become one of the levers of pressure in possible negotiations. Therefore, the Kremlin wants to enter into dialogue only from a position of strength, returning the region under its control. Ukrainian forces seized up to 1,500 square kilometers of Russian territory in the first two weeks of the Kursk operation in August, Black Bird Group analyst Pazi Peroinen told reporters. He stressed that the Russians have been constantly counterattacking since then, and with the offensive now coming from three directions, he predicts that Ukrainian-held territory will shrink in the coming days. According to U.S. intelligence, Russia sent at least 10,000 North Korean soldiers to the Kursk region, the publication said. The agency noted that one of the major counteroffensives was carried out almost immediately after Donald Trump was elected U.S. president. Journalists shared that the latest counteroffensive by Russian occupiers did not go smoothly. According to them, the enemy achieved only minor successes and also lost a significant number of troops and equipment. A 39-year-old Ukrainian soldier named Alexander, who works in intelligence in the Kursk region as part of the 82nd Brigade, told reporters that in recent days the defense forces have destroyed more than 50 Russian vehicles, including armored personnel carriers and tanks. According to him, Russian soldiers constantly make the same mistakes, they drive on roads that are controlled by Ukrainian firepower, miss turns and even shoot at their own infantry positions. Artem Efanov, a drone operator in the 82nd Brigade, told reporters that he saw Russian troops getting stuck in swamps, bogs, and rivers, with muddy terrain preventing them from successfully advancing. In addition, the former company commander of the Adar Battalion, Yevgeny Daiki, spoke about whether Ukraine needs to hold the Kursk region. He noted that there is a second part of the operation, which has not worked yet. U.S. President Joe Biden has authorized Ukraine to use long-range Atoms missiles on Russian territory for the first time. This decision comes two months before the end of his presidential term, according to the New York Times. According to officials, the weapon will likely be used initially to protect Ukrainian forces in the Kursk region. The New York Times notes that Biden's decision represents a significant shift in U.S. policy. This choice divided his advisors and came just two months before the inauguration of the elected president, Donald Trump, who promised to limit further support for Ukraine. Officials stated that the authorization for Ukraine to use long-range missiles, known as Army Tactical Missile Systems, was given in response to Russia's unexpected decision to deploy North Korean troops in combat. While officials have said they do not expect a drastic change in the course of the war. One of the aims of the policy shift is to send a message to North Korea that their forces are vulnerable and that they should not send more troops. Officials noted that while Ukrainian forces are likely to first use the missiles against Russian and North Korean troops threatening Ukrainian forces in the Kursk region, Biden may allow them to use this weapon in other areas. Some U.S. officials have expressed concerns that Ukraine's use of missiles across the border could provoke Russian dictator Vladimir Putin to take retaliatory action using force against the U.S. and its coalition partners. However, other U.S. officials have dismissed these concerns as exaggerated. It is worth noting that this week, Ukrainian Foreign Minister Andriy Sibiha held a conversation with U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken, during which the issue of permission for long-range strikes was discussed. Following the meeting, Sibiha mentioned that there is cautious optimism regarding this decision. Recall, France and Britain have allowed Ukraine to strike deep within Russian territory using their scalp and storm shadow missiles. This decision was made following approval from the United States, informs Le Figaro. Following the approval from U.S. President Joe Biden's administration for long-range strikes on the Russian Federation, France and Britain have also authorized the use of their weapons by Ukraine. As a result, 
The Ukrainian armed forces can now carry out strikes deep within Russian territory using not only Atoms but also Scalp and Storm Shadow missiles.